sorry for the delay. The previous speaker had some technical difficulties. And uh, I'm grateful that so many people came for a talk that has word type occurring three times in the title, so thanks for being here. Uh, my name is Chris, I work at uh, Maker Foundation, and today I'm going to be talking about creating type, type safe dubs with TypeScript and type train. So let me ask you a question. How many people here use type, TypeScript on a daily basis? Yeah, that's what I was expecting, right? More than, more than half a room already. So in the, in the last few months, years even, we have seen like this tremendous growth of TypeScript popularity and uh, recently it even got more popular than you know well-established languages like Ruby for example and we see like steady growth of on NPM and so on and so on so basically TypeScript has this huge company uh, behind itself called Type, uh, Microsoft and you know there's a lot of uh, um, workforce, workforce working on language itself and on the whole touring, uh, tooling around. So for example, I don't know, like Visual Studio Code was for many people an entry thing, like, you know, entry drag for uh, TypeScript because the, it worked so well. Uh, so uh, for those who don't use TypeScript, let me give you like, you know, more or less what to expect from the language itself, some, some ideas behind it. So uh, first of all, like you can think about TypeScript as a JavaScript with types, and the only twist in this <laughs> explanation is that the type system is totally different from the one that you would find in classical uh, object-oriented programming languages like Java or, or C Sharp. So, uh, first of all, it features structural typing. So, imagine you have two types with uh, like interface name and interface person name uh, property of a, a string type, and in TypeScript these types are intercha interchangeable, so you can assign one to another. This is uh, totally unexpected for a Java programmer, which has nominal uh, typing. So uh, this is totally uh, doable in TypeScript, but it's not possible in class classical OOP uh, languages. And you might be wondering about dark picture on the right, uh, right side, uh, dark image. So, if you're a JavaScript programmer, you might be familiar with uh, duck typing concept. So this is the, um, the idea is just as follows. If it walks like a duck, if it quacks like a duck, then probably it's a duck. So you don't need to know the exact shape of uh, entity that you're interacting with. It's just enough if it you know, answers some, some uh, commands, let's say. And that's why we have duck, that is typing on the right side. So, so structural typing is like a duck typing, but during compile time. So then we have uh, TypeScript uh, features advanced type level uh, programming uh, features. So uh, for basically it allows us to uh, transform types during compile time uh, in like unimaginable way. So uh, here we have a complex object type, which has like some nested uh, nested properties, we have some arrays nested, and so on and so on. And now we can uh, use uh, some generic type, like for example, deep partial coming from the uh, helper uh, library called TS Essentials. And essentially, uh, and, and we're going to get like an object with all properties marked as optional recursively. And this is pretty awesome, like, you know, you can have a config which is like uh, strict and then we can have like you know some defaults and then make automatically user input which is like optional of this of this uh, uh, config object um, and finally we have gradual typing this means basically that we don't have to type our application 100 percent correctly of course we should try to have this uh, we can come up with type uh, type coverage metric which basically means like we can count the number of symbols in our programs that are uh, typed as any. Any means that it's really untyped. Uh, and divided by all the symbols in our program, and we can come up with this percentage, how, my, how your program is you know, uh, typed. Uh, and, and there's this tool, TypeCov, which does it for us. And basically, um, 
this allows us to, to just fall back to JavaScript if we don't have type coverage or uh, uh, we don't have type information or we just don't care about types in this specific place. But of course, it should be used as as as, as, as possible. So now let's talk about how. Uh, what are the challenges about TypeScript and Web3 and Ethereum uh, ecosystem challenges? So, um, this should not happen. <laughs> so, obviously. Okay, I know. Uh, so, uh, that was the demo part, anyway. So, uh, now I uh, created like a simple Web3.js uh, code snippet. So here we so web web three js is a library written in JavaScript. It's not TypeScript TypeScript enabled. So here, even though it's a TypeScript file, uh, we use it as it's marked as any. We don't have any type information about it, but we can still use it and just operate like if we and just write code that we would write normally in JavaScript. So. If you're like really desperate, you can still use it like this. So, for example, here, if when we are getting like when we're creating web free, it's any. When we're getting the block number, it's any. When we're loading uh, ABI to interact with a smart contract, it's the DAI uh, contract on the mainnet. It's again any, and you know everything is any, like you would do in JavaScript. So. Uh, uh, some people are uh, happy with this, but basically, this uh, like TypeScript in this case doesn't help us that much. Like you know, it's there, but uh, when interacting with blockchain, it's like blind. So the easiest approach here is to load uh, typings. So typings is is just like external type information that was provided by community usually, and it just provides this type type uh, information for library uh, written in JavaScript. And there are typings for Web3. Usually, you would uh, install it by yard at uh, types Web3. Uh, Web3, but we don't have internet connection, so I'm gonna just load a Git snapshot that I did before this talk. Uh, and the only change in the code is that. The way that we import library instead of using require, we use uh, ES6 style imports, and then suddenly our code is properly typed, almost. So the web free is properly typed. We can uh, see that the block number is now num number uh, as we expected. We get like uh, normal uh, code competition and so on and so on, but. When we interact with a uh, contract deployed on the mainnet, we load this uh, we load this uh, API on the fly. This is important bit because really uh, this contract is is a dynamic structure. It changes, you know, depending on the API that you load. So in this case, so basically these methods are like typed, but only a little bit, right? Like C. You see here that balance of is typed as just take some arguments, the array of arguments. So it's not really properly typed. And return type is again any, which in fact is big number. So you know it's also it would be cool if it would say to us that it's big number because people are all often thinking that it's just number and try to I don't know use plus on it and they just got a, get an error during ground type, which sucks. So how do we fix this? Uh, so, so typing has this limitation, like it lacks API changes as well. So, if if there's a change to Web3 JS uh, library, then typing needs to be changed you know, by someone later. And as mentioned before, it doesn't work with dynamic interfaces. Like we load the API and then the and we generate a, a wrapper on the fly during the runtime. So, so it's impossible to type. Solution for this problem is to generate typings on the fly. So, basically, we can gather. API files from our project, uh, uh, project upfront uh, before compiling it with TypeScript compiler, and in the separate build step, just generate this uh, these uh, typing type uh, typings. Uh, so basically, DTS files, and this is exactly what Type Chain does. So another twist here is that we need to generate typings specific to the web 
free access, like blockchain access library, so people using web free uh, JS. Um, the, the API of a smart contract wrapper is slightly different than from Ethers or from Truffle and so on. So, so basically, type chain gathers our APIs, gathers like the, the, the target that we want to use. So, for example, you specify that we use Ethers and it generates these, these uh, DTS files for you. So let me, uh, let me show you how this works. So again, we would just do yarn add type chain and a specific target. So in this case, we want to load target called web3 uh, because we're using web3, not ethers. And, um, uh, and then this is a CLI tool that you could, you know, make like a post uh, post install hook or anything. But here we're just gonna run it directly, so uh, you can see it running good. So basically, you specify the target, as I mentioned. Can you see? It? <laughs> okay. Uh, you specify target and you specify the uh, API files. In this case, it's just one file, but it supports block block patterns and so on and so on. And basically, we can see that we generated uh, generated some some general types for Web3 and ERC20 DTS file. And uh, now, in the code of our application, we need an explicit cast for this interface uh, that was generated because it's just impossible to 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 guess the, the like to, to make a you know connection between the address that can be random during the compile time with the with the typing, so here we just need something like this explicit cast, and voila! Now die is ERC20 token, and balance is big number as you would expect, and we're getting proper uh, uh, proper uh, code competition here. So these are all. ERC20 plus some others uh, methods that DAI contract have, has, and uh, as well as uh, events should be somewhere here. Yeah, so, you know, it supports events as well and so on. Uh, we can also browse a little bit this uh, typing uh, that was generated, so. Basically, you can also see that sometimes uh, it allows us to specify either number or string because this is what Web3 allows us, uh, Web3.js allows us to do. So, so, you know, these typings are really convenient and they, they're very, like, they're as open as possible, right? Like, if there are some conversion happening, you can see it here as well. So, we can, you know, you don't have to be super strict about some things if you don't want to. Uh, okay, so, in general, Type chain uh, works perfectly with any ID. If your ID supports TypeScript, it supports you know, type chain generated wrappers. Uh, it uh, supports uh, officially three different targets. So it's uh, web free, the 1.8, <coughs> uh, Ethers.js, and Truffle. Uh, it supports custom targets. So what you uh, like, for example, imagine that you're not developing a DAO. You're developing like a protocol, and you want to have a, a generated ax, uh, generated uh, library to use by different developers, and you want to, you know, have come up with your own interface, you know, hide some methods, whatever. You can generate it automatically by providing your your custom target, which just takes parsed API and generates some code. And by the way, it can generate even code in different language than TypeScript. It's very general interface. And basically, then you can just hide implementation details from, from the users of your library. You could swap uh, internal web free, like blockchain access library without affecting your clients and so on and so on. Uh, TypeChain has full ABI uh, version two support. So, you know, things like structs, things like fallback functions or override, overridden functions now works. Uh, now work and it supports events as I shown before. And what's pretty cool that it works with travel, so we can do smart contract development, not DAP development only. So here I have this example of uh, simple 
uh, so the, the contract, uh, it's it's like you know type uh, truffle con uh, truffle project with some simple scientific contract called Gritter, and it has you know some dummy functions. We have some tests here, and you know it's super nice now to write tests because we have all these code competition, so we don't need to guess them there that the method names. We don't need to change files to, to you know uh, be sure what's the what's the name of the method. And what's cool is that if we introduce a change to the Solidity code, like let's say we rename say hello to uh, screen hello, and we regenerate, uh, or we don't, it's not true. <laughs> uh, and we regenerate the uh, wrappers, we're gonna find automatically without running our uh, test we're gonna find breaking changes. So if you do, you know, a lot of uh, smart contract development, it's just faster to find breaking changes like this. You know, it just saves a lot of time. Uh, uh, and by the way, if you use something like Waffle uh, or a, a similar tool to travel but using Ethers, it works as well because it can uh, generate Ether style uh, tagging. So. Recently, it's it's still in beta. Really, I, I was about to, to release it today because it, uh, it works really well and people tested it already. But I don't have the internet access here. Really. <laughs> so basically, type change version one point zero features a few new additions. So if you used it before, now the the targets as are extracted as a separate packages, which which is much nicer because you can even create your own package, uh, your own target, like without you know. Uh, polluting the TypeScript, uh, type chain uh, repository. The ABI parser is much nicer, so you might be wondering why do we have ABI parser at all? So basically, we can parse, uh, you know, JSON style ABI to something type safe, like uh, discriminated unions in in TypeScript. It speeds up writing the, the the code generation part a lot, and it's just like you know less error prone. And basically, the architecture of TypeChain uh, now reassembles it with the compiler, general compiler uh, architectures, where you have you know this processing in pipelines. So first we parse API, and then we do code generation. And this basically means that code generation is just a pure function that takes API and returns some strings without any I/O and so on. And so, on. so it's as simple as possible. And I want to talk a little bit now about the Ethereum TS organization that I created one uh, more than one year ago, which is like a family for, for TypeScript related uh, projects, uh, TypeScript and Ethereum related projects. So uh, Arthur was helping me for a long time and recently he joined like uh, as an official uh, uh, maintainer. And we have more than 20 community contributors to TypeChain. Yeah. Uh, Just like our question. Yeah. How, how like TypeChain can help us building uh, like a user interface, like it's for developers to test our smart contracts. Like the same, like do the GraphQL one. Can we return to this question when I'm done? Because yeah. I'm running out of time, and we're gonna uh, we have time for questions at the end. So, uh, TypeChain is already used by well-known companies like Maker, now we find Chainlink, and so on and so on. So it's not like you know some toy project that one really uses. It's it's really used uh, in the wild. And uh, Gitcoin also sponsored like uh, many uh, bounties uh, to you know inject some cash <laughs> for uh, for external developers to help us with uh, exact issues. And basically that's it. That's, it. that's my Twitter handle. You can consider following me on Twitter if you like you know blockchain and type.